heaven. I want to get you to sing a little bit, maybe while other people are gathering in. Keep your seats while we turn to number 402. Number 402, it's nice to see you all. You're very, very welcome this evening. And the Lord has been good to us and given us a nice evening to travel from Port Rush and join up with all you good Balamina folks tonight. So 402, it's on the screen behind me, and let's sing it together. There will never be a sweeter story, story of the Savior's love divine. And let's hear you really sing it out. Now it's a good going song. Don't drag it. Keep your seats now. <laughs> there will never be a sweeter storm. two in the book if you're using the book another lovely M a good singing M oh happy day that fixed my choice on thee my saviour and my God we shall sing verses 1 2 and 4 of this lovely song <laughs> Thank you. 
hope you enjoyed that. Got you warmed up, and now we're ready to open up with our opening hymn this evening, a very, very popular Harvest Thanksgiving hymn. Come, ye thankful people, come, raise the song of Harvest Home. It's number 223 in the book, if you're using the book. If you're on the screen, well, then that's all right. It's right there for you. And we'll stand this time to sing if you're able to do so. Come. seated. We're going to open up now again with a moment of prayer as we commend ourselves to the Lord for our service. I'm going to ask Wesley uh, to come now and to lead us in prayer as we prepare our hearts for the ministry and song and whatever we share with you this evening. So, Wesley Stewart, just now. Thank you, Wesley. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it's with grateful hearts that we come into your presence this evening as we give you thanks for all of your goodness to us. And Lord, as we look around us at the reminders of your faithfulness, we want to give you thanks. We realize this evening that in many parts of our world this evening, there are people who have to go without. There are people who are suffering because of famine, because of drought, because of storm, because of flood. They've lost maybe everything that they've ever lived for. There are people who live in war zones. They've been pushed out of their uh, place where they live and even from their country. And they've had to flee for their safety. And here we are this evening in Northern Ireland, in Ballymena, being able to come to, into your house where we can hear your word and sing your praises and give you thanks that we have health and strength to be here. We've got a roof over our head and clothes that we can wear. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all your goodness. But even more so this evening, we want to thank you for your gift of a Savior. We thank Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for one who died in our place 
so that we don't need to suffer forever the consequences of our sin, but that we can receive eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It would be an awful thing to go without harvest, to live without any food, to have to suffer uh, that deprivation for months on end, but how much worse if we did not have a Savior, if you had left us without that hope. But tonight we thank you that through trusting in the Lord Jesus, receiving him as our Lord, confessing our sin to him, and, and making him Lord of our lives, and living our lives to follow him, that then we receive eternal life and we have the hope of a home in heaven. That's wonderful news. So while we're thankful for the crops around us, we're even more thankful for your word and for your salvation. And so this evening, we pray that as we focus for some time through the ministry and song and through the hymns that we sing and through the time that we spend thinking on your word, that you would focus our minds And we pray that you would examine our hearts. And Lord, we pray that this evening would be a night when we might meet with God for all of us, that we might be conscious of your presence here amongst us tonight. We invite you to be part of our service, to lead us and guide us, and to guide our thoughts. And so we dedicate this time to you, and we ask that you might be amongst us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Wesley. Well, we're happy to be here uh, as a part of the family of the Stuarts, Yvonne here at the piano, and uh, Wesley and Lorna is here as well, his wife, and then Hannah, their younger daughter, is with us tonight, and Chris, Chris Allen, and they're going to come and sing and share a little bit just now, uh, so I'm going to ask them to come right away and uh, bring, what, a couple of messages in song uh, at this stage, if that's all right. That would be great, and maybe just bring us up to date what's happening in your lives. Amen. <clears throat> yes, well, it's great to be here. Um, hopefully you can hear, um, hear me enough, and especially with Chris over his guitar, hopefully it, it all sounds okay, but we're just so glad to be here. It's always lovely to come back um, and to see, especially in Harvest Apps, I love seeing all the fruit and the vegetable. I think it's it's so special. So we've, um, we've got three songs prepared, but I actually haven't talked to Granda to see if he wants us to sing all three, but we'll do two anyway, and we'll, if we get the nod, we'll come up for another one. But um, we, when we were choosing these, we wanted to make sure that um, they were topical, and so they, the, the theme of the songs we're going to sing today is all about thankfulness um, and how great God is and how um, he's blessed both, um, both of us. I actually serve um, in the Christian Union at Strand Millis, um, and we've had three weeks of it so far. And every week we are blown away with the numbers that we have. Um, And I think the word that we've used so often is to be expectant because we always set a limit, I feel, on what God can do. But he's blown us out of the park. And for um, the first week we had um, 250 students coming together just to to serve and praise God. Um, And what a blessing it is. So um, please be continuing to pray for Stranmillis CU and Stranmillis as a university. Um, But yes, we're going to sing I Will Offer Up My Life and, and When I Survey. Not tell, not 
What an amazing hymn, Isaac Watts hymn, and we're so thankful too for all that the Lord has done for us and what he means to us as individuals and as a family. I'm going to ask Yvonne to come now and uh, Wesley to uh, join up and we're going to bring you a song. We'll do one piece just now and after we do that then uh, Alistair maybe come and give us a, a few announcements so uh, we'll uh, run with it like that and then we'll come back on again after that. So uh, we've been doing a little practicing uh, for this evening and the moments that we had uh, just uh, to share with you tonight. <clears throat> In the harvest field now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark, the voice of God is calling to the harvest calling you. Little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown, and you can win it, if you go in Jesus' name. Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it, and he'll not forget his own little is much when god is in it labor not for wealth or fame there's a crown and you can win it if you go in jesus name when the conflict here is ended and a race on earth is run. He will say, if we are faithful, welcome home, my child, well done. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown. Savior's face we see, cares of life will be forgotten, we'll be happy, glad and free, little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame, there's a crown and you May the Lord write those words into our hearts this evening as his children. Thank you. Amen. I'd like to take a tractor home for the thing. <laughs> Off the back table there in the grubber. <laughs> it's just lovely to see all the beautiful decorations. And uh, thank you so much for making us feel so uh, welcome. We really did have a good time this morning. I felt like a bee in clover and uh, just uh, excited to be able to share God's precious Word uh, with you. We've had a lovely uh, opportunity to do that this year in many different places, 
and with a lot of different people, and it never seems to uh, get tired. Uh, we get tired a little bit in body. Uh, somebody said, now as we get older, uh, the, uh, the hamster's still running, but the wheel is slowing down. Uh, but we're so thankful to be with you uh, this evening. We're going to sing another lovely hymn together, and it's, uh, we have heard the joyful sound uh, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. You know, there's a beautiful verse in the Bible that says, Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. Well, uh, you can know a joyful sound, but you can also hear a joyful sound. And it's great to both hear it and know it as an experience in your heart. And that's a wonderful text, and I've got a message on that. I'll share it with you on some other occasion. But blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. And if you know it, then you'll be able to sing about it. And here it is in our hymn this evening. We have heard the joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Now, if you're able to stand, then we welcome you to do so. We have heard the joyful the cobwebs out. Amen. What a glorious message to be able to share with people anywhere we go. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to ask Chris and Hannah to come back again and minister to us in song. They're actually both involved in the Lord's work. As uh, Hannah has mentioned, uh, she is in her final year, fourth year at Strand Millis, but God has been doing wonderful things for them. Uh, she just intimated there at Christian Union, and we rejoice in all of that. And Chris has just actually taken up a new job two weeks ago with the Exodus uh, ministry here in Northern Ireland. Chris, you maybe just share in a few moments what the Lord, and they'll pray for you, the people, yeah, well? That's it. As, as Eric says, yes, two weeks ago, I, I've started a new role as the, the fundraising officer for a large, yeah, a large Christian charity across Northern Ireland called Exodus, and it was birthed out of the North Coast in, in Coleraine, and there's centres now in Lisburn, in Belfast, in uh, the North West, and in South Down as well. And the whole ministry is there to assist churches, to, to partner with churches, and to see young people 
discipled. Um, maybe the, the main way that you'll ever hear of them doing that is through wonderful teams where young people will uh, sign up for uh, about 16 weeks. They'll, they'll meet weekly and then head off uh, somewhere locally or, or into Europe or further than that to go and serve um, the Lord in some way. Um, whether people are brand new to faith uh, or whether they're at a stage where they're, they're able to go off and, and begin really discipling others. Um, there's something uh, to be found for everyone. So um, my job now is to, is to help the, the guys who are running the centers in, in those areas uh, to meet new supporters, uh, to help try and raise funds. Uh, and so maybe that will be a hard and laborious task, but it's hopefully one uh, that will be really fruitful um, as we begin to see young people uh, continue to, to follow Jesus across the country. So uh, that's a bit about what I uh, do day to day. Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner can't and unclean singing how marvelous oh how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous oh how new message all the time. Tis old yet ever new, love divine that reaches down to you and me and all who are in need tonight. Thank God again for the grace of God in Jesus Christ. This is another harvest song that we uh, have uh, picked out for you this evening. Harvest is with us once again. Blows in the breeze the golden grain, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Blessings from heaven still increase. <clears throat> Think about the words, very important, far reaching effects. Harvest is with us once again. Blows in the breeze the golden grain. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. 
blessings from heaven still increase. Harvest this year for all to see. What of the harvest yet to be? When all the harvests here are o'er, where will your soul be evermore? Harvest is passing, so must we. Soon we must face eternity. Records are there to clearly show seeds we have sown while here below. Harvest is here for all to see. What of the harvest yet to be? When all the harvest is with us once again. Jesus is calling yet in vain. Make sure of heaven while you may. Why do you falter? Why delay? Harvest is here for What of the harvest yet to be When all the harvest here are o'er Where will your soul be evermore When all the harvest here Let's unite our hearts in prayer. I have a soul to be saved. Let this truth be engraved on my mind, on my heart while I'm young. For how awful the cost if my soul should be lost and in hell if I die as I am. Die as I am, yes, die as I am. All hope gone forever if I die as I am. Dear Lord, these are solemn words from this old and timeless song. And even the words from the song that we have just been singing that really has focused our thoughts on where we will be in eternity. And I pray this evening, Lord, in the light of that stupendous reality, that we might number our days and ply our hearts to wisdom and make sure of heaven before it's forever too late. God bless this congregation of people tonight. We thank you for the boys and girls, Lord, tonight who are with us. We thank you for each life. We thank you for each family, each mother and father, grandparents tonight. Lord, we pray that in the closing moments of this service, the Holy Spirit will speak into our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to speak for a little while to you tonight from the, Old, uh, the New Testament, actually, from the book of the Revelation. So if you've got a Bible with you, we're going to be reading from Revelation chapter 14.
Revelation chapter 14. And I say again, it's lovely to see you boys and girls with us tonight. And I hope that uh, you enjoy being amongst us. I don't want to be too long. I don't want to tire you out too much. And the time is really going along nicely. But for the next little while, let me speak to you from this amazing book, the book of the Revelation, and chapter 14. Now, John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, he was the youngest of the disciples, and God allowed John to give us four, actually five books in the New Testament. The Gospel according to St. John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of the Revelation. And when John got the visions that he had and recorded for us in this book, he wasn't in a big crowd. He was actually alone. He was in exile. He had been banished to an island called the Isle of Patmos. And whilst he was there in banishment for his faith and trust in the Lord, God gave him a revelation of things to come that would happen. And as we watch the world events, we are seeing with our own eyes and hearing on the newscasts these days the things that must surely come to pass as this age comes to its climax. But in the context of this harvest service, I want to speak to you for a little while from chapter 14, commencing to read at verse 14. And John says, I looked And behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle, something very sharp that cuts like a hook or like a scythe, a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat upon the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, who had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs, or two hundred miles. And I pray that as we have read this word, God will breathe its truth into our hearts for Jesus' sake and glory. Let me share briefly with you about three harvests that we find recorded in the Bible. For one of them, we need to go to John's gospel. And the picture is set at a place that we now know as Nablus and in those days known as Samaria. And the Lord Jesus has been on a journey. He's tired, and he sits down at a well known as Jacob's Well. And as he's sitting there resting, a lady comes out from the city of Samaria to draw water. And as they engage in conversation, she begins to realize that she is in the presence of someone who is not just another human being, but someone who is extra special, supernatural, because he knows everything about her, even though they have never met before. And the Lord is supernatural, ladies and gentlemen. He knows everything about you, even though you may never have been in this service before. 
And he knows everything about you, even though you have never disclosed many things in your life to anyone else in the world. He actually knows your thoughts. The Bible says he knows your down-sitting. He knows your uprising. He knows your thoughts, even afar off. He has read you like a book. Whilst they were talking, this woman was wonderfully moved and ran back into the city, having left her water pot at the well, And she said, come on out, she says, and see a man that has told me all things that ever I did. While she was doing that, the disciples had been in the city, and they had come back out, and they were wondering what the Lord was doing. And they asked him if he had had any meat, and he said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And what was his will? that he should reach people who needed him, like you, like you. Like I said to a man years ago in South Carolina who had some fish ponds in his farm, and we had got to feel and know each other a little bit better. We had never met before, and he began to like the services that I was preaching in. His wife was saved, he wasn't saved, and Doyle became a good friend. And one day we were fishing at Doyle's fish farm, the pastor and myself and a few others. And then Doyle said, I'd like to take you and Miss Yvonne out, he said, for a meal. We're going to go to Patrick. Well, there was a little town called Patrick. Can you believe it in South Carolina? Patrick was there. And he said, I'm going to take you to a fish restaurant. And so we went to the fish restaurant. We had a lovely fish uh, supper there, just in all the trimmings and everything. And then we sat and we talked a little while. And I said, you know, Doyle, I'm a fisherman too. He said, preacher, is that right? I said, yes. I fish for fish with legs, like you. Ah, he said, I understand. And I said, Doyle, you've been hearing me. And when you come to Jesus, you let us know that you have got saved. Doyle's habit was to chew tobacco. You ever meet anybody that chewed tobacco? They used to do it back in the old days and there was a spittoon there beside the old crane, and the fireplace, you know. <laughs> and Doyle was an expert shot because he had a little dish in the middle of the Land Rover and he just, and that was it, into the... We got a phone call some weeks later from Doyle. He said, Preacher, I've got saved. I've come to Christ. He was 62 years of age. Tom Shaw, the Reverend Shaw and me, we were doing a mission near Valley Robert. Valley Robert. On the long mile there, that, what do you ever call that? The Long Nancy's or whatever it is, some long thing anyway. Up that road. And we got back home on Monday night at half past ten, driving back to Port Rush. And there was a message on the telephone. It was from the pastor. He said, I've got to tell you, he said, that at half past ten this morning, Doyle Carpenter was called away from this scene of time. He had a brain aneurysm, and in a few moments, Doyle Carpenter was in eternity. He had come to Jesus Christ on the Thursday night or the Thursday, and he was called away on the Monday. Imagine you getting saved tonight and having a brain aneurysm on Thursday and your funeral being held and us being able to say, he got saved last Sunday night in the church and we know where he is, we know where she is, they are home with the Lord Jesus. Now that can happen. But here's the message. Jesus said to the disciples that I talked to you about as they came back and engaged in conversation. with, He said, men, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. They are white, all ready to harvest. You think he was talking about the fields around Samaria? He may be. And it says, Say not ye, there are four months, and then cometh harvest. Maybe harvest time would have been four months' time. I think that's probably what it means. But the Lord Jesus was looking at another harvest. It was a moving harvest. It was a harvest coming walking down the road. 
And the person at the head of the crowd was a woman who had got saved at the well. And all these people from Samaria were coming out to meet the man who had told her all things that ever she had done. Is not this the Christ? And they were arrested, attentive, and came and heard Jesus. You have come tonight. We're not at the well at Samaria. I'm not Jesus. You're not the people of Samaria. But I'm here in Jesus' place to speak to you like he would have spoken to the people of Samaria. That he might bring them to himself. And here we are in the harvest service. And as I lift up my eyes, I see you. I see people in many different countries. I see people everywhere in my mind's eye. And I know the harvest is great. And all over the world today, there will be people reaped for the Lord Jesus, brought into the kingdom of God, brought to the Savior. Would you like to be His tonight? See, you know, Pastor Eric, I was harvested for Jesus in that service because of the redeeming work of the cross. That's why Jesus died. So that he might gather a harvest, that he might win a people, that he might take them home to his garner and that they would be forever with him. You say, why, that's far too good news to be true. Well, I can tell you tonight, it's good news and it is true. And it's for you. The harvest of redemption. Praise God tonight for the reapers who are gathering the harvest. Thank God for those who are becoming those sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. And what are they? People. People. People like you. The harvest of redemption. And then in this book of the Revelation, there are two harvests that are spoken of in the Bible reading. There's the harvest of of the grain and there's the harvest of the grapes. And you know what the harvest of the grain speaks of? It speaks of that day when Jesus is coming back. We read about it. That glorious transfigured Savior coming riding down the slopes of glory at the head of a great army. His angels, His Redeemed people, he's coming back for them. He's not only the bridegroom, but he's the grand gatherer of his harvest. And the Bible tells us over and over again in the New Testament scriptures that Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming, is coming again. Jesus is coming again. Shout the glad tidings over mountain and plain. Jesus is coming again. And my dear friends, I'm ready. I'm watching. And someday, when Jesus comes, those who are saved will be caught up to meet him in the air. He said, well, Mr. Stewart, I thought I needed a rocket to get to heaven. Well, you don't need a rocket. The chorus says, I won't need a rocket when I go up in the sky. No, Jesus is coming for people who are ready. There's a big mound of scrap metal there in cold rain right on the edge of the river band. And there's two big cranes that work there. And they put their big buckets into that scrap metal. And everything that's ferrous grips those buckets. And everything that's not ferrous They don't want it mixed, aluminium and other stuff. It won't grip to that. Why? Because the magnet attracts the the steel. The Lord Jesus has got people all over the world who are like little pieces of steel. He's the magnet. And he will 
catch his people a way to be with himself. Some of these days, Jesus is coming back. You know what the Bible says? Are you listening to me? Two people will be sleeping in bed. One shall be taken. The other left. You say, how could that be, Mr. Stewart? Well, that could be if you are saved and your spouse is not saved. That could be if you're not saved and your spouse is saved. Two people sleeping in bed. One taken, one left. Two people working in the field. One shall be taken, the other left. Just clothes, welly boots, a boiler suit. But gone. And you? Say, where'd he go? What happened? You say, oh, that's what Eric Stewart was talking about. Let me try and phone him and see if he's around. 0789038916. He's not answering his phone. He won. I'm not at the phone with me that day. There'll be no scrolling on Facebook then. I tell you, we'll see him face to face and tell the story saved by grace. Are you ready? Two women shall be grinding at the mill. Well, that was very common because they brought the grain in and they ground it in two big stones and they were grind- two women grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, the other left. I don't want to be left behind when Jesus comes. Neither do you, I'm sure. But if you want to be with Jesus forever, then you've got to trust him. You've got to come to the cross. And then, praise God, you'll go to be with him in the mansions. The gathering of the grain. The harvest of the grain. But then John says, I saw another angel. And he came. And he said, thrust in the sickle and gather out the grapes. The gathering of the grain is the gathering of God's people. Do you know what the gathering of the grapes is? The gathering of the grapes is that which does not belong to him. That's the gathering to judgment. And that's why it speaks about blood. That's why it speaks about fire. That's why it speaks about the great winepress of the wrath of God. What a picture that is. When they brought all the grapes in from the vineyards, they would put them in a great big press. And then the men would get in and they would tramp the grapes. And as they tramped the grapes, the juice would flow out, out through little rivulets at the bottom of the wine press. And that's what it means when Jesus says that the grapes will be trodden in the wine press, and the grapes are the people who come under the judgment of God. There's a picture in the book of Isaiah that speaks about the Lord coming up from Edom, from Bozra. And it says his garments are stained with blood. And the question is, what is this? He said, I have trodden the winepress alone. And what is he speaking about? He's coming back from the judgment of the wicked. He has been treading out the grapes of wrath. The the harvest of redemption. Would you like to be redeemed tonight by the precious blood of Jesus and become his and leave your sin and trust the Lord? You see, Eric, I don't want to miss when Jesus comes back. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. But when you least expect him, he'd come. In the twinkling of an eye, 
I heard one time, how long does it take you to twinkle your eye? 0.2 of a second. Be no time to prepare then. You need to be ready. You go home tonight, you say, by the grace of God, I am going to be ready. I am going to trust Jesus tonight. Now, before I go to sleep, unless he should come, lest he should come before the morning. The grapes of wrath. Oh. You say, oh, Eric, I don't want to die and be lost. I don't want to be left for the judgments of God. Thank God you don't have to be because the Lord Jesus took your judgment. He took the punishment that I should have borne and bear, but he stepped in in my place. He gave his life so that I might never be at the judgment of the great white throne of God and hear him say, Depart from me. I never knew you. But rather to hear him say, Come. Come into my kingdom. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. The harvest is here for you to come to the Savior. The harvest is near for you to go to be with the Savior if you know him. But the harvest is certainly coming. If you don't know him, you will not escape. And you will say, oh God, it is forever too late. I have missed it at last. I am sure that in your thoughts this evening, you're saying, you know, Pastor Eric, someday I would love to be saved. I'd love to be saved for my home's sake, for my family's sake, for my children's sake, for my own sake. And I have been thinking about it. But tonight I'm going to do something about it. I am going to put my hand into the nail-pierced hand of Jesus. I am going to come to the cross of Calvary by faith and trust him so that I will be ready for that moment of rapture to be with him and that I will never be in the judgment of retribution and eternal damnation. That's not what God wants for you. He wants you to be his. He wants you in his heaven. He wants you in his family. He gave everything to make it possible. Will you just let go everything to make it possible and real for you and come just as you are? Just now? How about it? How about it, boys and girls? Trusting the Lord Jesus? How about it, men and women? Come just as you are in this wonderful harvest service. Shall we pray together? Let's do so. Dear Lord Jesus, tonight, thy word is a solemn word but thy word is also a sacred and joyful word. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the gladness all around. Jesus saves. But we know, Lord, there are two sides to the coin. We know there's the other side because no sin can enter God's heaven. No sinners can enter in there with their sin. Not that defileth, not that defileth shall ever enter in. O Lord, I pray that people will allow you to take away their sin. 
I pray this evening that someone will experience the wonderful transforming power of Jesus and his so great salvation, the harvest of redeeming love, wonderful Savior, and then soon, Lord, the harvest to gather home the grain into the heavenly garner. O oh, Lord, the solemnity of being left to be the harvesting of the grapes, the grapes of wrath. O oh, Lord, may there be no one from Balamina Church tonight that will lose out eternally, miss it forever. O oh, God, gather all the people in. Help them to come to see and to know and to respond to your invitation tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody. I heard an amen coming up there from the pew, some little person. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Here's the closing hymn. 316. Once again, the gospel message from the Savior. Now, I'm just human, but I'm the Lord's messenger. From the Savior you have heard. Will you heed the invitation? Will you turn and seek the Lord? Amen. 316 in the book and it's on the screen. I'm fit to come. A lady said one time to me, Mr. Stewart, I'm too bad. I said, no, ma'am. She's sitting right up near the front in a meeting and a mission. I said, you're just the kind of person that Jesus came to save. He came to save sinners. And she came. She trusted Jesus. Though she had had a past. Yes, we all have a past. Some it's blotted out. Yours is yet to be. But it can be now. Cease of fitness to be thinking. Do not longer try to feel. It is trusting. And not feeling. That will give the spirit seal. These are wonderful words. All right. Think about it. Cease. Thank you.
wonderful words? Sure they are. Oh, now, Lord Jesus, thank you for the lovely supper prepared. And we pray that you will bless it and bless our time together. And if some people have to go away, Lord, we pray that you will be with them and watch over them. In Jesus' name, amen.